and she's getting $1,100 a bedroom, paying 100 bucks a month to live in this townhome, not responsible for the yard, the roof, or the structure, or the sewer. It's a good gig. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Coats on the Clock. I am thrilled to have with me today Chelsea Steen of Your Castle Real Estate. And today our topic is going to be on house hacking. I know, what the heck is that? But before we begin, let me just kind of go through the rules. I know you were on, on season one, yep. so you're familiar with them. Yep. But for anyone who's just joining us for their first time or um, kind of forgotten the rules, so we run this just like the fourth quarter of a Denver Broncos football game. That's right, we're out of timeouts, just like the actual Denver Broncos. We've already used them. So it's 15 minutes start to finish. We do give you a two minute warning. Yep. Let you sum it up from there, and then we're done. So it's one topic, one expert, 15 minutes, and our time has already begun. Let's all right, do it. all right. So, uh, house hacking. In real basic terms, what is it? House hacking is essentially when you buy a home as a primary residence, you move into said home, you rent some or all of that house out uh, to cover some or all of your mortgage. So, an example perhaps. Okay. Um, I have a client that purchased a home in Arvada, a brick ranch built in the 60s with a finished basement and a private entrance to that basement. His payment was about $2,500 a month on that property, so he rented out the basement for $2,000 a month, and then his girlfriend paid him the other $500 upstairs, so he lived for free. Nice. Okay. And that's the idea of a house hack. Yep. Okay. And then is there a future plan with the house hack? Yes. So the idea is rinse and repeat. So buy one every year. You promise the lender you'll live there for one year as a primary, fulfill that, and then move. Okay. Um, now, do buyers come to you with the idea of house hacking, or is this something that you bring up to them? It's about 50-50. So my past clients that are house hackers are really jazzed about this. They love the financials. They go tell all their friends about it, and then they come to me like, I want to do what so-and-so is doing. Um, I also teach house hacking classes, so I get people coming to those that want to do this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, um, other times people are just asking me about my investment portfolio. I tell them what I did, and then that gets them motivated to do that. So about 50-50. Okay. Um, are there any city or county ordinances or anything like that that, you're, that you could come up with that might interfere with house hacking? Yes. The most important one is every municipality will have a different rule for the number of unrelated people that can live together. Okay. So, so depending on where you're looking with your clients, make sure you look up those rules. Okay, and know them. Yes. Right. All right, know your <laughs> rules, all right. Um, is there a type of property that lends itself better to house hacking than maybe another type of property? All single family homes with multiple bedrooms will work. But if privacy is a concern to your client, I'd highly recommend looking at something that's got like a basement apartment, a carriage house, maybe an ADU above a garage, something like that where you've got some separation of living space. Okay. So kind of like where they would have completely their own separates. Yep. Do you have people that share a common kitchen? Often, yeah. Especially like those brick ranches I was talking about. Uh, they may purchase the home and there's only one kitchen upstairs. And then over time, they add a kitchenette to the basement. Uh, or something of that nature. They don't all come ready to go. Okay, got it. So generally speaking, and I know every circumstance is gonna be different, yep. I get that. But generally speaking, are there some real do's and don'ts um, that a realtor should be aware of when working with a client that's considering house hacking? Yes. Okay. Do you know the laws that we already talked about? <laughs> Do you have a really good team of lawyers, CPAs, et cetera, that you can refer them to? So unlike a normal you know, buyer where you're at the closing table, you give them the key and you say, we'll see you at our next client event, these guys are gonna need help with getting a lease drafted, getting tenants in place, et cetera. So you wanna have that experience and team. And then don't um, speak about things you don't know about. <laughs> Do your research, make sure it's actually a good buy for your client, because if it's not, they're gonna find out after the fact. Yeah, not so good. Yeah, not so good. Don't do that. And you had mentioned when we were chatting um, just a little bit beforehand about really on those leases that they're a little bit different than the standard lease that you might get from, yes. you know, I don't know, on downloadmealease.com yeah. <laughs> or whatever it is. Um, I just made that up. Anyways, so because not only are they a tenant, but they're a roommate. Mm -hmm. 
And so you were, um, could, do you kind of share with uh, our audience what you yeah. were sharing with me as far as m really mapping out maybe more than a regular lease? Yeah. So like if you go download a lease off of Rocket Lawyer, they're going to assume that you aren't living in that property. You're renting out the entire property. When you are actively living there, it gets a little bit more complex. There might be some parts of the property they're not allowed to go to. And so that needs to be specified. If you hate mowing, maybe you have them be the one that's responsible for all of the yard work. But you can kind of pick and choose how things are. Um, but I'm not an attorney. This isn't legal advice. So please make sure you talk to one. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but I think that's good advice. I yeah. mean, as a, as a realtor, you need to be aware yeah. that they can't just download the standard rocket.com or whatever yeah. lease. Got it. Yes. yes. Very, very good. Um, so when you know that a buyer is really looking at doing the house hacking. Yep. Okay. And so that's their ultimate goal. Yep. And you've got your team, yep. got that. Um, so what are, you have your regular, I don't know how many points it is. I've heard anywhere is from 70 points to 99, the things that a realtor has to do in a transaction. Sure. Okay. But there's more when it comes to house hacking. We yes. just add a few more on because. Why not? Why not? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so adding those on, what are some, I know this is not going to be an all-inclusive list. Yes, But sure. what are some of the things that you would normally add on to that list when you're working with a, someone who's going to be house hacking? So there's two big ones. One is you need to know the market rents. So you're going to be in a property and your client needs to know, hey, this is what my monthly payment is going to be according to my great lender, Marietta, um, on this particular property. And then you need to know, well, this is how much you can roughly get per bedroom so that you guys can analyze that property of does this make sense for you and your financial goals. The other one is you need to know a little bit about construction and costs. So not every house is perfectly set up as we talked about to be a house hack. Mm -hmm. So perhaps in the basement, your client is asking you, well, how much is it going to be to add a kitchenette? That might be a good cost for you to know offhand to be able to give them. Okay. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise they're up in yours. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Got it. And then you had said something about the rents typically are based upon a per bedroom type thing. Yeah. So when you're house hacking, unless you've got like a true ADU and it's all separate and you're renting out that whole unit, you're renting by the bedroom. So when you look at rent a meter or any kind of rental comp as an agent and say, all right, you could get 2,500 for this whole house. Divide that by the number of bedrooms and just assume that when you're renting by the room, you'll be able to get a touch more per room. You can actually get more by room than you can by the unit. Got it. Okay. Makes sense. Now, we um, were chatting a little bit earlier. Um, there are certain types of people that are probably not good mm -hmm. candidates for house hacking. Mm -hmm. But like everything, it's not for everyone. Yep. Yes. I myself don't know if I'd be good at house hacking. Yep. Right. So Sure. Yeah. I'm just, you know... A, my husband, it's just, you know, he's not a house hacker yep. kind of guy. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> so I, th I would assume that we're kind of, you know, there's a fair amount of people out there that may not be. Sure. So what would be some of the signs that you could say, like, hey, maybe this is someone that this we should look at some other alternatives for? I think being frugal is one of the most important characteristics of someone that's looking to house hack because you're willing to sacrifice some privacy Right? Even in a perfect house hack with a separate basement unit, private entrance, you're still sharing a yard, you're still sharing a driveway, you're still sharing some space. So the frugal piece and the desire to invest in real estate has to be higher than the inconveniences. Uh, we were joking a little bit earlier, just in general, about people that make good homeowners, actual houses versus people that maybe should live in a condo. So I think asking your clients about what their maintenance tolerance is or their understanding of what's required into maintaining a home, et cetera, um, because a tenant might not accept some of the things that you yourself may accept in your house, such as really tall grass. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yes. Yep. <laughs> right. They may not find that so funny. Yeah. They yeah. don't love it. They are not into it. Yeah. No. Got it. Okay. So, and then also you mentioned the ability to do repairs. Yes. Or at least the stomach to deal with doing repairs. You can uh, hire great contractors. That's something as an agent you want to have on hand for all of your clients, but especially your house hackers. Um, but yeah, you've got to be willing to fix stuff, right? The house hacker. Yeah. yeah. Or buy a townhome. Townhomes make great house hacks. Okay. And that's what we had chatted about. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I don't think I'd ever really looked at a townhome mm -hmm. for a house hack. Yeah. 
They're right. great. Now, do you have to check the HOAs to make certain that they'll allow that or what are... Good question. That, okay. So the HOA is going to determine if you can have short-term leases or long-term leases. And typically with house hackers, you're buying a property, moving into another one a year later, and you're not selling the first, you're renting it out. So mm -hmm. you should always be looking at things from the lens of having long-term renters. So as long as the HOA is cool with long-term renters, you're going to be good. Then you just need to look at the local municipality of how many people can I have that are unrelated. But like I have a client that bought a house in September, another under contract now in the same complex. There are three bed, three bath units. So each bedroom has a full bathroom and she's getting $1,100 a bedroom. Paying a hundred bucks a month to live in this townhome, not responsible for the yard, the roof or the structure or the sewer. It's a good gig. That is. Yeah. Wow. Maybe I could talk them into house hacking after all. You know? yeah. right. <laughs> okay. So um, I think that is kind of bringing us up on our two minute warning. Okay. All right. So at the two minute warning, I always ask people. Yep. So what is some of the best advice you've ever received? Brush your teeth twice a day. Twice a day. Yeah. Yes, I do. I love that. And advice. floss also. And floss. Yeah. yeah. Right. At least once. Yeah. Yes. I get it. So good oral hygiene. Yeah. Right. Not only will it extend your life, mm -hmm. probably make more friends. Yes. Right. And have a good smile. Yes. I love it. Tenants love a good smile. They <laughs> <laughs> Nothing sells like a good smile. Yeah. Right? All right. Positive attitude. You got to have those pearly whites. So yeah. gotcha. Now, if anyone out there is interested or has, yeah. would like to learn more about it, might be able to Get that extra sales volume by yeah. helping some house hacking. Are sure. you available for questions? I'm available for questions and I teach bi-monthly classes that realtors are welcome to attend. Okay. How would they reach out to you? Via my email, just Chelsea, C-H-E-L-S-E-A, at ChelseaSteen.com. My last name is spelled S-T-E-E-N. Dot com. Dot com. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, as always, you are a lot of fun. Yeah, and thanks for having me. Packed full of information. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All Appreciate right. it. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.